Well, it's about time for another video, but it's too cold. We're going inside. It's still cold. All right, now we've got the inside sweater instead of the outside gear. Part of living in this tiny space that makes it so complicated is that uh, there's all this on and off, especially in winter time. It's really complicated and time consuming. <laughs> It's one of the things I don't like, but that isn't what I wanted to talk about today. So what I wanted to talk about today is I want to start separating out these ideas. What do I mean when I talk about road culture versus RV community? And uh, I think that there is a divide. I think that even road culture is a subculture of this trend. Uh, to live with less, more of a minimalistic, simplistic, somebody put in the comments, essential. Uh, how to really bring everything back down to a much more uh, simple and tinier footprint. Not necessarily because of a belief system, but just because uh, it makes more sense. It makes sense to live a little bit smaller uh, on the inside, which gives you maybe more time or more money to live and experience life. A little bit bigger on the outside. There's lots and lots of reasons why people uh, are shrinking their lives a little bit. Some of them are un, uh, something that they can't control. Some of us lose money, so we have to contract. But there's an intentional contraction by a lot of people. And whether you want to call that minimalism or simplicity, I think that's one cultural move in and of itself. Uh, when I talk about this idea of road culture or more of a traditional with a new spin on nomadic culture. Uh, you know, for those of you who know or don't know, you know, nomad really comes out of the pastoral movement. Its roots are in the shepherds who took their livestock, the sheep or the cows or the goats, and they moved them through the different grasslands and sort of in terms of uh, season so that they could support the food needs of the livestock and also for themselves it was their livelihood uh, so nomadicism is really was created not because it was a cool thing to do not because tribe was fun but was but because survival depended on it uh, you moved for food you moved for weather you moved because your work moved whether it was seasonal or the livestock or whatever was required you moved with your needs and it was really based around your survival needs and uh, it evolved you know into different communities or groups you know like the the caravans of the gypsies or the uh, the steppes of the of mongolia have a lot of nomadic tribes and you know, even here in America, in before there was barbed wire and fences, you know, the cowboys moved their livestock up and down, you know, the quarter of the whole United States. They didn't have uh, the, the range, the rangeland and the grasslands were open. Uh, you know, that's sort of a topic of debate these days mm -hmm. about what's public land, what's private land, what's government land. But that's a topic for another day. So. This cultural shift, this idea that I'm talking about, it isn't anything new. Uh, what I see, and one of the reasons why I'm talking about it, is that we're in this time of tremendous change. And uh, for many of us, that traditional living, you know, in one place with one job and one house, that may be not something that you want to do over the course of an entire life. And it's not that people aren't moving around. I think what's new and what's different is, you know, with the invention of the wheel, things got a little bit more flexible. You put a little motor on that, you can go almost anywhere. And so we are in this moment in time where the tiny house movement really was more of a cultural shift than any kind of RV or trailer. Because in the time that I've been doing this, I've really seen uh, an amazing amount of change. You know, you went from the camping store had a few 12 volt RV type of, of things that you could buy to now you can get anything in any size, any kind of wattage uh, and any version of it you need. The tiny house movement, I think, more than the RV or trailer community really pushed a cultural shift to create smaller appliances, tiny wood stoves, uh, smaller uh, function in a tidy, tinier space 
not because it was a poverty driven decision because it was a lifestyle driven decision and so we're really shifting out of uh, the nomadic life one being something that you had to do in order to survive two it being something that a lot of people had to do because of economic reasons not that that isn't still happening and won't keep happening but it's really shifting into a desire movement a culture that's being built because people want something different uh, and I see that as a huge positive. I think that it's in its infancy. I think that uh, we're in this moment of time right now where regulations are trying to contain and control it. Uh, but I think the economics are going to drive it such that this idea of more of a road mobile living uh, is not going to be stigmatized. It's something that you know people are excited. I'm excited about creative ways to create home, work, community, uh, just interesting structures, interesting ways to live. Moving away from conventional and traditional as 100%, you know, you were born this way and you're going to die this way. So I see that as the cultural shift that I want to be part of. Now, the contrast to that, and I think what's so prevalent here on YouTube is the RV community and the reason I want to bring that up is when I you know was doing these videos especially last year people you know got a little hair up there you know what because well you're not a nomad because you're not traveling and that's to me that's an ignorant statement number one you don't know the history number two I already did that for a couple years so it's not like I haven't ever traveled anywhere uh, and number three that's small thinking that's tiny thinking and that's not what I want to be about at all and so the RV or the van community, I think, is a positive force in and of itself. It's, it's a subculture, even of the road culture is a subculture of a bigger movement of reducing uh, a lifestyle to a smaller footprint in a more mobile, non-traditional format. And so this whole RV van community tribe thing that's happening uh, I think like I said I think it's a positive I think people are finding community they're finding ways to be together they're finding a lifestyle that works for them uh, and I don't think it works for everybody I've seen in some of the comments uh, that you've tried it and it didn't work for you either it doesn't work for me it's not something I'm interested in I'm not interested in uh, getting out of society I'm not interested in traveling exclusively to make videos about traveling I'm I live this way and this is what I love about this whole road culture idea because it can support different ideas different ways of being that you can't necessarily accomplish when you just live in a brick-and-mortar situation you know the costs are higher uh, there's a lot of logistical issues so I see it as a, a positive. I just wanted to differentiate those two things uh, and also really implore you not to look them at them at as a right or wrong, uh, as an evolution of idea and a way of being. And a lot of people that start off in the RV community idea group uh, may find that they morph into this bigger road culture idea and vice versa. People who you know, like me, I never started out to travel or to be in a community. I never started out thinking any of these things. They evolved as I experienced them. And I think that's mostly what I want to tap into and I wanted to bring that up today is to get off of, of s tiny thinking. Even though your home is tiny, I'd like to see our thinking get a lot bigger and a lot more creative. And those are some of the ideas I want to be talking about here on this channel is how can we create a positive road culture movement and keep expanding it so that it's constructive productive um, and it's not stigmatized and I see a lot of that stigmatization uh, leaving as more and more people are entering into this kind of lifestyle but uh, I want to expand it I don't want to contract it and I know that's uh, aggravating for some people in this uh, forum but I'm just giving you a little heads up. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're doing. I am promoting road culture. I am not talking about RV community. I wish everybody well who wants that, but that isn't going to be on this channel. Not that we won't bump into you along the way. That would be fun. So uh, we're going to end it here. I'm going to take a deep breath. For those of you who want to learn more, there's lots and lots of links below. And with that, we'll see you next time. <laughs>